good everyone. My name is Rene and today I'm going to talk about how to write a report for t-test. Uh, specifically, this is t-test for paired samples. But essentially, the, the writing is also similar if you will be writing for t-test for independent samples. All right, so I, I told you that the first part is uh, that we should remind our reader of the objective of the study. So let's see what uh, has written here. The objective of the study is to observe if there will be changes or differences in the disruptive behavior of dementia patients during full moon days and other days. All right, so essentially that is actually the problem or the objective. Changes or differences. When, when you're writing as much as possible, um, maybe you should avoid you know, something like this, you know, changes or differences. That, does it further contribute to the narrative, to your write-up? Does, does this make your write-up more informative if you throw in two terms that practically mean the same? Or would it be more, would it be easier for the reader to, to simply uh, find a single term here? So if I were to rewrite this part, maybe I'll just say differences. If there will be differences in the disruptive behavior of dementia patients during full moon uh, days and other days. Plus, if you want to be more politically correct, maybe the, the phrase dementia patients is, maybe there's a better way of saying that. Maybe we should say patients with dementia so that we are separating the disease from the person. So the objective of the study is to observe if there will be differences in the disruptive behavior of patients with dementia during full moon days and other days. All right, that sounds fine. Uh, next, um, the next part is I told you to write alternative hypothesis. So let's see what the student said here. Thus, the non-directional alternative hypothesis is that the number of disruptive behaviors during full moon days uh, and other days will not be equal. Okay, so one, I specifically said that the hypothesis should be directional. One, why do I favor alternative hypothesis? Probably your instructor in high school, probably you were taught to state the null hypothesis instead of the alternative hypothesis. Because yes, while it is true that we really are testing the null, stating the null in the context of a research paper is not, is not very logical. At the back of our head, we know that we're just testing the null. But to write it or to indicate that in, in the actual research paper doesn't seem logical. Uh, why do I say that? No, because when you're conceptualizing the problem in the initial parts of your paper, you are already forwarding a hypothesis. And what is a hypothesis? A hypothesis is an educated prediction. If it's educated, that means to say that you have read the literature and that prior to collecting data, prior to the analysis, you're essentially saying that I know the answer to that question. And so naturally, you will present evidence from the literature that there really is a difference in the disruptive behavior between, you know, among patients during full moon and during other days. And it's a bit weird to sort of present all of these evidences and arguments. And then at the end of the paragraph, you will declare, by the way, there is no difference in the disruptive behavior during full moon and during other days. So it's kind of weird that you go through all you know, the lens of all of those argumentations only to present the null hypothesis. And that's why we favor stating the alternative hypothesis because it really just makes sense. No? But of course, we know that it's not the alternative hypothesis that we are testing. Um, it is actually the null that we are testing. Second, why do I always encourage my students to present the alternative, the directional hypothesis? One, because as what we have mentioned, you have read the literature, you are familiar with the literature. Um, so saying that it will not be equal is not sufficient. Now, let me know what, what is the nature of uh, that statement, not being equal. Is it not equal in the sense that there will be more disruptive behavior uh, in other days as opposed to full moon days? Or is it that there will be more disruptive behavior during full moon days you know, uh, versus non-full moon days? 
I'm not exactly sure if it was mentioned in the problem, uh, but let's just imagine. Hypothetically, if you think you read the literature, what do you think will the literature say? Do you think the literature will suggest that there is more disruptive behavior full moon versus other days or the other way around? We're just pretending that we already read the literature because that's what you should be doing. You should read the literature so that you know exactly what the direction of the effect of the relationship will be. When you write, try not to make commentaries uh, in your own writing. So write as though, though you're talking to your audience. And normally, what I would say here is that, straightforward, it was hypothesized that the number of disruptive behaviors will be greater during full moon than other days. Our hypothesis now is directional. We're more specific now. Um, do you always have to be directional? Not necessarily. There are some instances that the literature is not really available and uh, there really is no other option except to forward a non-directional hypothesis. Next, the statistical analysis used is a t-test uh, paired samples or within or within subjects design. Okay, uh, so again, try to avoid using the word or. Just give it to them straight. This is okay. Maybe we can improve it by being more casual about it. No? Uh, so we you can say um, to test this hypothesis, t test for paired samples was used. So maybe that's a more straightforward of saying it. The only problem I have with my statement is that it's a passive, it's in passive voice, which is discouraged in academic writing. So as much as possible, we want our uh, sentences to be active. Next. Uh, so I said, um, what is the result from the data? Do not um, make additional commentaries on your own write-up. From the data, the probability is less than uh, 0.01. Now, because we already stated the alternative hypothesis, when you're discussing the result, as much as possible, try to veer away from sort of interpreting your result in reference to the alternative, uh, to the null hypothesis, because that's not the hypothesis that we stated in the first place. So if, if I were to write this, I'll just say it straight. Uh, I'll say result reveals that, what is the result? Patients exhibited, patients exhibited significantly, so important yung word na significantly, if the result is significant, significantly more disruptive behavior when the moon is full relative to when the relative to when it is not full so when, when you report the result try to be as informative as possible if we go by this route uh, from the data the probability is less than 0 0.01 which means that the null hypothesis has been rejected uh, we can infer that the face of the moon does have an effect on the samples like if i read that if you're the reader like do you get that instantly like do you understand that take the position of the reader if you're the one who's reading it does it does it make instant sense it's kind of difficult to understand right now whereas if you say result reveals that patients exhibited significantly more disruptive behavior when the moon is full relative to when the moon is not full, I, I guess that's more understandable. So see, it, it's, more, it's more informative. Uh, but you might say that doesn't sound to be very statistical. It's fine because we can simply inject the statistical values. How do we do that? We can inject the descriptives. We say more disruptive behavior. What is our evidence for that? The mean. When the moon is full, we insert our stats. So the mean is 3.022. Uh, and then don't forget, every time that you say the mean, you have to say the standard deviation as well. SD of 1, 
0.499. Okay, you can also round this off into two decimal places. Relative to, so this is the average disruptive behavior when the moon is full. Relative to when the, when the moon is not full, then let's insert our descriptives again. So mean equals, here it is, 0 0.589. You, you will notice that I no longer place the zero. Uh, in reporting, we, we eliminate the zero prior to the decimal point. SD of 0.445. And then, so th that's the descriptive that I'm talking about, mean and standard deviation. But we say that the difference between 3.022 and 0.589 that's a lot of difference, a difference of more than two points, we said that that's significant. But what is our evidence? We have to state our, the result of our t-test. And how do we report our t-test? We say t, how do we express that? t, parenthesis, degrees of freedom. What is the degrees of freedom? 14 equals, what is the value of the t? 6.452 comma p what is our p value p value is 0 0.001 and that is how you write the result so by stating this this is your evidence for the fact that you said you said that there is a significant difference or that the disruptive behavior is significantly more during full moon and then next i said what is the effect size so based on the Cohen's D, so again, we can simplify that. We can say that, what is the effect size? Describe it. It's large. So just say it, as simple as that. The effect size is large. And that's it. Uh, and then let's put our Cohen's D equals. So you, you don't have to explain, like, um, the student here is explaining uh, since it is higher than 0 0.08, uh, then it is large. You don't have to explain. You don't have to lecture what you learned from statistics uh, to your audience in your paper. So just tell them that it's large. It's already their responsibility to figure out why does he say that this is large. It's their responsibility to know that anything above 0.8 as a Cohen's D is large. No? So you don't have to, your role here is not a teacher to sort of instruct them how to understand the report. Now, if they're reading the report, they're expected to understand the report already. And finally, the last bit, which is a very important thing, is to describe the result in a non-statistical manner, uh, which was not mentioned by the student. So the last part is, like overall, if you will describe the result to somebody who doesn't know anything about statistics, what would you say? So I might say this finding suggests that. Now, the danger here is that you might just repeat yourself uh, by so simply restating the result. Now, you might say this finding suggests that patients exhibited significantly more disruptive behavior when the moon is full um, relative to when it's not. No. So what I try to do here is instead of saying disruptive behavior and full moon, I normally go by the meaning of this or the definition of this. I don't exactly know what the definition of disruptive behavior is. So I'm going to sort of um, wing it when I write this part. Uh, but Let's imagine that I read the literature about full moon and about disruptive behavior and what I'm saying is actually accurate. So I'm going to say the finding suggests that when the moon is fully illuminated, so I'm not just saying it's full moon, no, it's fully illuminated. This finding suggests that when the moon is fully illum illuminated, Patients with dementia are, of course, this is not con conclusive. It's probabilistic, 
So it's important to qualify what you're saying here. Patients with dementia are more likely, I'm not saying absolutely, they're more likely to manifest or more likely to act out behaviors that are relatively destructive. So by saying behaviors that, I'm, that are relatively destruct, uh, destructive, that is my attempt to sort of expound what is the meaning of disruptive behavior. So the last part is to make this really look as though we got this from an article is to italicize every statistical notation. We always do that. Never forget that. One-fourth of writing a good uh, paper, a good report, is it one-fourth, maybe 20% or 10% of writing a good report is that it has to look the part. It has to look like a good report. If it doesn't look like a good report, then people probably will already judge it to be a poor report. How do we make this better? It has to be in APA format, which means to say it has to be Times New Roman, font size 12, double space, and since it's a paragraph, and this is something which frustrates me over students, but sometimes even if I ask students to submit a document, or even if it's actually the final paper already, sometimes students do not care to indent their paragraphs. And that's exactly, and that's the first thing that you have to do when you write a paragraph. All paragraphs are indented, or at least most paragraphs are indented. So there. Uh, the last thing that we're going to do is we should sort of run over this and see if we have spelling mistakes or grammar mistakes or typo errors. Um, so that is what you should do. So there, how does it look? Does it look like um, something that uh, you can find in an, in an article already? Uh, so that is, our, that is our goal in writing. That is... At least my goal for you in writing to be able to write as though that you're as though you're writing already for an article. 